Oh. Ooh. Arts and crafts, Charles edition. What's up everybody? Today on Cars and Cameras, we're doing the first ever Kawasaki KX80 two-stroke engine swap into this Harley-Davidson SX125. Now this is no ordinary Harley-Davidson. It was brought over from Italy uh, by AMF and sold under the Harley-Davidson name, but it is not a Harley-Davidson. It's a 125, it's a two-stroke, it's a trail bike, and you can't buy parts for them today in 2022. The KX80, on the other hand, is quite possibly the most powerful ADCC two-stroke ever made. This sucker will go 75 miles an hour. So once we get this engine into the Harley-Davidson, this thing will go faster than it probably ever has. We're going to start by getting it up on our motorcycle lift, popping the engine out, doing some restoration bits, and going from there. This thing is going to be quick. All right, so not only are we going to be swapping on a KX80 engine onto this old AMF Harley-Davidson, we need to seal the tank. It's pretty rusted out. We need to recover the seat. We need new wheels and tires. This thing is pretty darn roast. So we're doing like a full restoration on this project as well. I think it's going to be really cool with that two-stroke high RPM going down the road. Uh, so we're going to start things off by pulling off the wheels and tires, pulling off the fuel tank, and uh, uh, resealing the tank and doing the wheels and tires and just cleaning up the bike and seeing what needs paint, what needs rust work, and of course, pulling out the 125. This bike's been sitting around back for six months now and... Oh. Ooh. Oh. I was planning on recovering the seat. I have no idea where I'm going to find another seat pan. So I'll just try to recover it and see how far that gets me. I think all this is just placed on here. Found some, this uh, bike came with some free maracas. Oh man. Yeah. So it's a little crusty in there, but no holes in the bottom. So this is ready to reseal. So we had our fuel tank on tumble for about an hour. Oh my. Disgusting. Oh. It smells like barbecue uh, potato chips. I'm not even kidding. All right, pretty much happy with that. It was disgusting. Um, we're gonna move on to sealing it up. So I don't feel like dealing with the seat situation right now and we're still waiting on our tank seal, so I'm gonna get started pulling this old engine out. Now I used a tape measure, and our new engine is right near about the same width as what is coming out of here, this 125. Now it's gonna make a ton more power, and it's even a little bit shorter, so we need to figure out where we're gonna put our liquid cooling system. Uh, but other than that, knock on wood, this should be a straightforward swap. All right, so the old Air Machi 125 is about ready to get plucked out. There were just four Allens on the bottom that were so full of two-stroke oil that they came off no problem. Uh, just a little bit of wiring, no big deal, in these two uh, engine, uh, engine mounts. All right, so the original 125 two-stroke is out and the KX80, KX85 engine is mocked up in there. My only complaint is that it just really looks like a tiny engine in there, but once we get the expansion chamber, the carburetor, the cooling system in there, it'll fill the engine bay uh, out very nicely. So I have it right here with the original bolt hole, and the engine is really in there as it should be from the factory in terms of the, the angle, but the big problem is look at the uh, exhaust port. So not only that, but the expansion chamber comes around and whacks this tube right here. So studying the KX85 chassis we have, I'm able to see that the frame comes out in two pieces like this and goes to one that comes up the center. So that's what I'm going to copy here. So unfortunately, I will be modifying this chassis, which I'm not thrilled about. But the way I'm justifying cutting the chassis is that, well, if it wasn't for this engine swap, this bike would still be sitting uh, under the lean-to 
rusting away. That being said, let's uh, tack weld some motor mounts in. We can cut our uh, frame and get this thing going. So you saw us put the nuts in the fuel tank, shake it around. There's still a lot of debris in there from the remnants. And then we wash it out with water and a hose. And then we put the whole fuel tank in the oven on as low as it could go for about an hour. Oh, yeah. That's right. That was a... <laughs> That was a, an idea I had that was just like, oh, let's put it in the oven. It worked for the coasters. Exactly. So uh, we're just sealing off the surfaces there. We're going to pour that in and get our, uh, get our fuel tank sealer working. Meanwhile, I'm going to whip out the tubing bender and start working on these motor mounts. So we got this thing all mocked up, kind of, I guess, the, the bottom, the, bit, the, the, the ribs or whatever, the, the, the new support because we're getting rid of these two. And... Uh, to be honest with you, we felt kind of bad cutting up this, but it, you know, it's kind of rare, kind of not sort of thing. Uh, John got an, an overview upstairs, and this thing is a banana. Like, you could peel it, it's that bad. It's, uh, I don't really know how it happened. It either got rear-ended or like dropped really hard on this tail section, because it is just, or it's, it's turning. on a Monday. Or, yeah, either way. But, I mean, I, I don't know, the, the tire is barely under the fender. Like, it's right on the edge. So we're just now noticing. Yeah, we're just now noticing. And then, like, this rear rim might might be pretty bad. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's That's fine. fine. But, yeah, that whole rear section, you can see the tire's not even lined up. Yeah, so, like, if, it might be kind of tough, but try and get this, th this bar and these two bars should be parallel, roughly, with each other. And they are just pointing that way. Yeah, it's, it's tough to tell on camera. Oh, yeah, you could really tell there, oh, okay, dude. cool. Okay. It is bad. Yeah. So, anyway, we were kind of feeling bad. Now we're not. Let's weld it. All right. Looks good, bud. Absolutely. We Thank can you. remove our spacers. Oh, yeah. These aren't curb scrapers? <laughs> so now we need to come up with a tube that's going to join right here and uh, go up to the top. we got to figure out how we're going to cleanly tie into what we have here, or the best we can. Uh, so let's uh, check the exhaust and make oh, yeah. sure the exhaust fits. And it I gotta like tell you, looks like it's going it to. fits like it was made for. It's looking good, guys. Congratulations, John. Thank you. Exhaust fits great. Thank you. Uh, so we have the the engine in place. It's it's shimmed up. It's tight. Let's check the uh, rear chain. Okay. And make sure the sprocket alignment is pretty good. And then uh, once we do that, then we'll be moving on to finishing up with the motor mounts. So we have two more motor mounts. We have one under here and one up here. And we got some ideas for that. So let me get over here and check the chain out. Now the busted tire's hitting the frame. Oh, that's that noise. Okay, yeah. I thought I thought we had some chunkiness on the chain. No, it's this okay, I see lovely it. tire. I see right it now. Dude, the chain, I think the chain is perfect. Looks good. The alignment's good. I think everything's good here. A little slack. Uh, deal. We, we got, got plenty of room to tighten up the chain. Uh, only thing left is, uh, well, for right now, is putting the uh, motor mounts together. So I got these nice little tabs that we're going to be using to weld onto the frame with some uh, three bolts. And then... Uh, a removable front upper motor mount so that way the engine can be removed from the frame. We have a like a piece of C-channel to go around it and then a bolt to the frame. So it's going to work way, perfect. Yeah, it's going to work. So I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, we've got it all painted up, looking looking nice. John has not seen this yet, so I uh, can't wait to see his reaction on this. I think it turned out pretty well. Charles, what do you think? Oh, I like it. Looks yeah. uh, looks original. So the frame is all... Freshly painted and looking good. So we're going to go ahead and put the engine on the frame and bolt it up 
and we're going to figure out where the radiator is going to go next and we're going to weld on some brackets there and bolt the radiator and uh, figure out maybe where some of this wiring is going to go so uh, here we go try not to scratch the frame Woo. Is there a certain way it came out? <laughs> um, yeah, you got to put the bottom in first. You got to go higher than the mounts. I think I'm doing it. I think I'm doing it. Kind of. Scratch. Scratch. All right. Not bad. Oh, you're right, almost there. There's that. I think the rear mounts the rear, may have. It, I think the rear mounts may have closed up with the welds. I think you're right. But that's okay. Yeah, it's fine because I'll. Uh, we'll just get them. Find adjust. Find adjustment tool. Hammer. <clears throat> screwdriver. Get, screwdriver. Look at that. Look at that precision. Okay, there oh, we there we go. Look All at right. that. Now the engine's back in. Let's mock up the exhaust because it's going to be right in the similar zone as the radiator. Let's make sure we're not going to be hitting anything. Oh, scratch. Scratch the thing. There we go. So we can <laughs> almost like put a zip tie right here. Oh, man, look at that. Got it in place. I got some pliers here. I'm out the way. Okay. Oh, they are tight. So my job is to mock up the radiator, get some mounts or some tabs to bolt this thing up and weld it to the frame. It's gonna sit something like that. Ike, what are you doing down there? Man, that's that's looking really good. Oh, thank you. I, I like what you're uh, what you're coming up with right there. I'm gonna be working on replacing the tires and tubes because. Well, they won't even hold air. Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, there's the tube. I got my finger on the tube. I think that tube holds air. The tire's just no good. Well, anyhow, it doesn't it doesn't it's getting changed. And I got to tell you, these tires can be a real pain in the butt because they have, like, uh, the uh, bead lockers on them. And, well, they can be a, a pain. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking the uh, wheel off. Charles, good luck with that, buddy. Yeah, I got a few tabs to straighten out, but... They might work in my favor bent. I like how with this job for fabrication, you know, usually you're like holding something or like using an engine hoist to hold a turbo in place. The radiator just kind of right there and I'm just going to tack some gussets in places where we can bolt this thing on and good to go. Now let's make sure I've got it in the right place. While Ike still wrestles that tire back there, I just got done with my last bracket fabricating it. Uh, it still needs a little bit of trimmage, but so far, the radiator is going to be supported inside and out. Hot! Dang! All right, the tire is on there and it's looking fantastic. Look at this. Charles, look at this. <laughs> Boom! Nice. nice. It's a good good uh, rotating tire. Apparently I'm the one that's more excited. No, no, it's, uh, hey, guess what? What? It's not dry rotted, there's not a big split in it, and that is one thing closer to us hitting the trail. All right, so once I get this thing bolted up, I'm gonna be moving to the front. So we got both brand new tires and tubes installed. Our KX85 engine is mounted in the frame hard mounted, the tank is sealed. We need to add some clear coat to the, uh, the fenders and tank, and we're waiting on a bunch of electronics in order to get this engine running. But we made a ton of progress on the Harley-Davidson KX85 in today's episode. Ike, do you wanna have a seat and see how you think of it? 
Man, I might crush this thing. <laughs> well, you can tell. I'm a big dude. You can tell how long it was. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow, the kickstand's got spitting from it being underground three inches. I think it looks awesome, though. Oh, absolutely. No, it, it fills the space well. Yeah. There's not this giant void. Like, you look a little tall for it, but you, you could swing it. Dude, ape, this actually... Ape hangers. Ape, that'll fix it. Yeah, ape hangers fixes everything. No, nah, this actually feels pretty good. Yeah. This is good. Get yeah. both feet up there. There you go. Feels just, like my old Kawasaki KZ650 back in the day. This thing will probably wear out a 652. This is nice. I like this. So we are planning on making this motorcycle street legal and possibly road tripping it. But uh, right now, <laughs> it's going to make an awesome trail bike. We'll pick this series back up. Once our CDI comes in, we're still waiting on a carburetor uh, and a few other bits and pieces. We're still, this technically still isn't dry, so the fuel tank needs another day or two. And uh, we should have this thing fired up and ripping down the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix. But it looks incredible. You guys have done an awesome job uh, on a lot of the fab work that was being done. Uh, thank you all for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. Uh, be sure to sign up for the Cars and Cameras newsletter. So go on our website, cars-cameras.com, and there will be a pop-up, Want More Cars and Cameras. If you put in your email, uh, you will get a newsletter from us twice a month, and we have things like polls and fan features, suggestions, and poll results from you guys on our newsletter actually decided that we would be putting this KX85 engine in a Harley Davidson. So if you want to help participate in contributing to future builds and ideas, be sure to sign up for our newsletter on cars-cameras.com. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you next time. It was down to two votes. It's crazy. It was a close one. Yep. You good? Yep. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, it sounds great.